Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Design for America is really excited to be partnering with Artifacts Group in Seattle to discuss design thinking. And um, sorry about that. One second. Emily, can you um, make sure that you uh, mute your microphone? Um, um, OK. Uh, so we're going to be introducing um, Artifact Design Group to talk about portfolios. This is part one of a series on professional development. We're really excited to share the work that Artifact Design Group has been doing, as well as share some of the work you guys as DSAers have been doing. So with that, we have Dave Miller. He um, works with Artifact for um, three to f uh, three years. How, how long have you been at Artifact, Dave? Yeah, it's a number of years. Uh, uh Three, but I worked with Artifact uh, as a consultant for years before that as well. So great. Well, and Dave does a lot of the um, recruiting and culture building in the office. So he he has seen tons and tons of designers. He lives and breathes portfolios. So we're excited to have him share his lessons, um, both from making portfolios but also reviewing them. Um, and so for the live audience out there, um, there's a chat window that you can add some questions to. Uh, we have some DFAers here in the uh, room. They'll be asking questions to Dave directly. Um, but with that, Dave, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, thank you, Rob. And uh, thanks to Design for America for setting us up. And, and to all of you out there, I realize there's a lot of different backgrounds that are going to join us on today's call. And so uh, we'll have people that are just starting to think about a portfolio. What is it? Why is it important? Uh, some of you will be on multiple versions uh, of your portfolio. So uh, with that in mind, um, let me switch screens here and uh, bring this up and make sure it's all working. Rob, can you see it? Uh, yes, we can. Awesome. Um, so again, uh, yes, I'm Dave Miller, and and uh, I'm with Artifact, and I'll talk a little bit more about, um, you know, what we do in a second. Um, but I think I'll I'll start with kind of a, a provocation here, um, and and I realize not everyone on this call is going into design, and so maybe the statistic doesn't match up well um, if if the role that you're applying for doesn't doesn't require a portfolio. If the role that you're applying for doesn't require a portfolio, I would actually flip it on its head and still say that um, it's a competitive market out there. Portfolios are all around communicating ideas, um, which regardless of what discipline you get into, whether it's design or finance or product management or healthcare, um, uh, the professional world is all about communication. So I would still say a portfolio is a way for you to differentiate yourself from other people. And it's the way to get your point across, to get farther in a process. Um, it articulates the projects you've been a part of before. Um, these are things that employers want to know about anyways, um, and that they look for as evidence um, of process and, and approach. So I'd say that this stat here, though, is, is uh, not entirely accurate. There's one thing that that will supersede your portfolio. And, and that's going to be your community. So for those of you that are joining this call, uh, many of you are um, currently working with Design for America and uh, you know students coming together with other students um, to use design thinking and innovation methods to solve challenges in their communities shows a ton of drive um, and integrity. And those are also huge parts of what we're looking for when we hire. Um, and so the community that you're forging now, the relationships that you're building, the trust, the skills, the credibility within your communities, these are going to lead you to the most, um, to the most opportunistic um, jobs and opportunities for you out there. So community by far supersedes everything I'm going to say here. Um, but portfolios are real. So first off, who am I? Why am I even qualified to have this conversation? What is it that Artifact even does? Um, real quickly, as, as an overview before we go into that, we're going 
We're going to examine the importance, impact, and influence that your portfolio has on your career. We're going to talk about design principles and philosophies around how to approach your portfolio. We're going to talk about the elements that go into a good case study. We're going to talk about where to find inspiration in the latest portfolio tools that can help. And we're going to do a tour of two to three portfolios of designers that are doing some things right. Again, this is going to have a bit of a visual design um, or product design or UX um, or technology design lean to it because that's what Artifact does. Um, but by all means, these transcend disciplines, as I said before. So um, again, I'm Dave. I lead, uh, or I'm the director of community and talent over at Artifact. Um, I think I have the coolest job in the world. Um, I'm a, uh, for the last 13 years, has been a talent scout. Uh, for companies and people that work in creative, marketing, design, and technology spaces. So um, Artifact itself is a product design and innovation firm, which means in short, we get to work on a lot of cool stuff. Uh, a lot of the buzzwords that you hear out there, virtual and augmented reality, smart cities, digital democracy, car UI, connected homes, internet of things, future of this, future of that, also have deep expertise in health, education, humanity-based product design and development. And we're specifically interested in where emerging technology um, can uh, uh, positively affect humanity and society on broad levels. Uh, we get to think uh, around some pretty gnarly problems and challenges with, uh, with a lot of fantastic clients uh, from all around the world. Um, a lot of what we do can sometimes feel like inventing. So it can be super ambiguous which is super exciting and totally scary as well. I get um, the good fortune of traveling the world to find the best of the best portfolios uh, to bring into our office and in a heavy concentration in the United States, um, traveling from a lot of the major metropolitan cities with, with um, strong um, uh, academia uh, programs in, in design. Uh, so I get to meet these professors, I get to understand their curriculums, I get to understand admissions, focus areas, how each program prepares um, their students for graduation and the job market. So again, it's a pretty unique 30,000 foot view. And it's all on a quest um, to find the 50 or 60 people that currently work at Artifact. Uh, last year, we attracted close to 4,000 job applicants. Um, we probably, between full-time and freelance, maybe hire 30 of those people, maybe. Um, so the competition is real, um, especially at, at smaller firms, or for that matter, even with the larger firms out there in the world, um, you've got a lot of competition. So the portfolio, again, going back to that earlier slide of 51% of the reason why you, why you got the job, it's absolutely true at Artifact. Um, uh, outside of you knowing somebody and getting in front of the right people here, if you're just doing us a cold email and application, um, uh, you know, we, we're looking for the portfolio to communicate to us and have you stick out from the crowd. Again, I think portfolios are more than just designers. I see portfolios from interaction and UX and, and visual and graphic designers and, and web production artists and engineers. Um, and industrial designers, but I am also looking at portfolios from researchers and strategists, from account managers, uh, program managers, project managers, product managers. I'm seeing portfolios from operations professionals. And especially when you get outside of design, as far as a job title, um, having a portfolio makes you probably a, a 10 percenter of the entire applicant pool. So if you're able to communicate your ideas uh, concisely and, and um, with some level of, of, of um, visual communication skills, you're really going to stick out from the pack. So we're going to jump into some design philosophies here. Um, you know, get your head in the right spot as far as approaching a portfolio. I think sometimes a portfolio can feel like a daunting task, especially for those of you out there that aren't necessarily specializing in, you know, quote, unquote, design as a profession. Um, but it shouldn't be a scary thing. All of us are working on problems and challenges out there, either um, through academia or, or, or through employment. 
And, and while you're working on these problems and challenges, you should be thinking about how you're going to present these problems and challenges um, to the people beyond you. So um, that presentation is the portfolio. It's not the last thing you're going to tackle. You're tackling it during the problem itself. Um, your portfolio is never really done. Um, it's something that's going to uh, you know, be with you throughout the span of your entire career. Um, it's something that you'll always want in the middle ground of your mind while you're working on these projects. So think of it in regards to, you know, as a professional or for that even, for that matter, just you as a person, um, a big part of just making it in the world centers around how you communicate. It's never enough to just have a good idea. It's how you present the idea. It's how you engage your audience. It's how you convince them that your idea is a good idea to begin with. So in the case of your portfolio, you are the good idea. You are what they're buying into. So if you take that a step further, realistically speaking, you are the brand. Your skills are the product. Your portfolio is the user experience. Whatever company you're working for um, or that you want to work for, they have their own brand. They're, they have their own product. They have their own offerings. Um, they have their own experiences that they're creating for their customer base. Uh, when they're looking to hire you, they're looking for evidence and signs and symbols that you could elevate and represent um, their brand. So the task of a portfolio is effectively communicating why you're the person to take on whatever challenges it is that uh, any given employer might have. I also want you to think of the portfolio as a learning and growth opportunity. So again, we're getting away from the fact that, oh, this is scary, where do I start? What do I do? The skills that it takes to put together a portfolio also transcend um, disciplines. You don't have to be a designer um, uh, you know, professionally. Um, you can use um, web production. Uh, this is content creation. Um, uh, narrative and, and storytelling and, and creating an arc. Uh, this is an exercise in visual commu communication. It's an exercise in presentation design. Um, again, you know, whether regardless of what your what your discipline is, communication is going to be how you get ahead in the world. So, um, in short, in design, if you end up being in design, I'm going to break it to you right now, a big majority of your time is around presentation. I mean, half of your career is taking the cool projects that you've been a part of, that you've been paid to do, and packaging them up and presenting them to the client or the stakeholder that's uh, paying you to do that. So presentation is a fundamental part of your craft, no matter what you're doing. I just... You know, I can't ring that home enough. Presentation is a fundamental part of your craft. So dedication to craft is one of the fastest ways to earn someone's confidence and respect. And I'm telling you, if you earn my confidence and respect through a portfolio and in the interview process, it's the quickest way to get you hired. And if you're already employed and, 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 you're, and you're using communication to gain confidence and respect from your colleagues, um, it, it's the quickest and easiest way uh, to get promoted as well. So let's talk about, got nine design principles here that, um, um, that I think are relevant. And by the way, I'm just one person's opinion. If you ask 100 people, you'll get 100 different opinions. Um, I'd like, I'd hope that you'd be able to use this as a key, um, as, a, as, a, as a point in the right direction. Um, and it, what feels real, you know, adopt. If it doesn't feel right for you, toss it out. Um, I think that on a high level, your portfolio is essentially an exercise in editorial design. So what do I mean by editorial design? Think about, think about that nice periodical or that online blog that you love tuning into. Um, it's inviting you to read and, uh, and it keeps your attention. Um, take notice of that uh, because there's you know, what you're asking yourself when you're trying to figure out how do I present my problems or challenges in, in, in a case study format in a portfolio, it's all around how you're laying out that content in an engaging way. How do you organize your headlines 
Um, how do you organize your body copy and your content? How do you um, how do you select imagery and where do you put those imagery? When I'm hiring someone, we're and and I'm speaking for our artifact as well. We're looking for evidence of strong communication skills. We're looking for the ability to process, organize, and prioritize key information. We're looking to understand your thought process. So good editorial design makes me want to read your content. It keeps flow. It keeps me engaged. And the best portfolios out there do this particular aspect very well. Now, for all of you that are non-designers, um, congratulations, you're, you're in the age of the internet. Um, Pinterest, Pinterest is hands down probably the easiest jumping off point for you to find design inspiration. You can type in things like editorial design or presentation design inspiration, and it's going to bring up a ton of different concepts for you to be looking at and considering. And remember, um, and we're going to explore some tools later on that will help you build this and bring it together. Use color, type, and consistent themes to create a branded experience. Uh, don't slop a bunch of unconnected info onto a page and expect anybody to read it. That goes back to editorial design. And the function of editorial design is creating an experience. I want to feel like I'm looking at something that you put time and thought into. I want to feel the quality of the idea and the process coming through. So an easy way to do that is, is to create a consistent theme. The good news is, is you don't have to reinvent the wheel with every case study you do. Like if you can get one good case study and you have one good kind of editorial layout and uh, and in certain colors, you can use that as the template for all the other pieces that you add into your portfolio. So really, this is just an exercise in creating one really solid case study, and then the re and then just you know take that and populate it out. Use it for everything that you have. Have a point of view around the importance of what it is you do. I'll get some pretty hot visual design portfolios that really don't need to say anything. Their work speaks for themselves. And for those out there that are able to do that, good for you. Um, uh, you're, you're at the top of your game. But I'd still argue you could take it one step further. Not everybody understands the importance of your role. Um, not everybody understands inherently what your strengths are. The portfolio is an opportunity for you to reflect what am I strong at? What am I enthusiastic about? What do I like to do? Um, why is what you do important? And why are you the one that should be doing it for that company? Again, you're not writing a novel here. This is very short paragraph, digestible content, um, something that's easy for them to read and engage with. Give your work space to breathe. Um, this is probably one of the biggest things that will happen is, is, you know, I go to somebody's website and they're trying to cram every piece of information on, on, on just the top end of the screen. Um, it is the digital age. Uh, we are trained to scroll. Um, use that space. Let your work breathe. Um, give it its own zone. Uh, wrap it in the colors and the type and the uh, um, and uh, the form and the function. Um, invite people to want to read it. If you if you screw, you know if you put it all together and, and nobody wants to read a mess. Uh, long story short. Show quality of craft through the artifacts created during the discovery and ideation phases. And we're going to talk about these. You know what are the artifacts that you create during. Um, during the process, the design process, or, or, or during the you solving whatever problem or challenge it is. Um, a lot of the times, you know, you're, if you're using design thinking, you're out there, you're meeting with people, you're researching people, you're understanding what the problem or challenge is, um, um, and, and uh, you're creating personas around that maybe, or you've collected data, and you're taking that data and you're, and you're making data visualization or information graphics, you know, out of this, those, those pieces aren't necessarily what your final idea is. What they're doing is communicating your process and communicating your idea. And they in themselves are a design uh, vignette. And they're what we look at um, in, in your case study to see what your quality of craft 
is. Frame problems with prompts and provocations, like how might we and what if. Um, these types of lead-ins are great headlines and subheaders alongside listing features. So these can help take this complicated problem and process and subject matter that you've been working on, and it allows you to make it easily digestible and engaging for the viewer. It sparks their curiosity and um, sparks questions. Um, it engages them instantly. The same way you have the how might we statements, the same way you have the what if statements, is you're also going to want to sit down and, and figure out what are the features that, that my problem or challenge that I'm solving addresses. Features I think of as, you know, it could be the appearance of something. It could be the multiple and many components um, of a product or an experience or an event or what have you. It's the usability of how you engage with whatever it is that you're creating. It's the capabilities and it's the problems that you're solving. These are all features. And through editorial layout design, you can use these product features as headlines that draw us through your experience and help us understand um, quickly and easily why it's important. I'll tell you, no one reads your portfolio. They just don't do it. Um, if anything, it's, it's a chance to get a call in and then you can come in and your portfolio also becomes your cheat sheet where you can take them through your pieces right there in real time. Identify companies you want to work for and start designing with them in mind. So Artifact, for example, like I said, we specialize in humanity-centered design. Uh, for the technology and social impact space. Uh, we love seeing portfolios that show problem solving in areas that we are interested in. So make a list of 20 companies that you'd love to work for. Take notice of what sector and industry they exist in. What problems and challenges are they solving for? Many of your favorite companies are gonna be tackling similar problems um, and they're gonna be doing it through similar mediums. So I encourage you to take your next school project when they're assigned to you or your next work project, but most likely school, um, and, and uh, approach them using the mediums that your favorite companies might use. So if you like Artifact, you'd ask yourself, is there a chance to combine this design prompt with some emerging technology? Um, or is there an opportunity to give this, this uh, social impact lean? Um, I'm looking for shared values or shared interests. Less is more, only share work that you're proud of. Um, it's, it's always a bummer when I'm super excited by your first couple projects and then I land on something that's sloppy. It's usually older work. You probably worked really hard on it in the beginning of your career, stayed up all night for weeks and you just can't stomach the thought of, of not showing it. But the reality is it's probably out of date. Um, and the fact that you even put it in there has me questioning the good case studies that you had in your portfolio. Now I'm wondering what really was your role um, in all of this? And like it or not, you are being evaluated on your level of taste, um, basically. It's a super subjective business, the business of communication. So how do we create evidence of process? You know, some of you could be looking at all this and saying like, yeah, but all I have is a picture of what the final outcome was. And that's why I say it goes back to be thinking of your portfolio from the very beginning of whatever project you start on and start documenting. For those of you in DFA, you've likely heard of design thinking. Um, I've got a diagram right here. When you're approaching your problems that you're solving for your community, you're, you're likely going through a, a defining and observation stage, you're going through um, empathy, which is essentially a research um, and analysis stage. Uh, you're going through an ideation phase where you're, you're taking the research and the, and the analysis and, and you're starting to kind of figure out what it is that we're creating, what are we gonna build? Um, the prototyping is building it, making it come to fruition, and then you're getting it out there and getting feedback from people. So that's the design thinking process as far as the problems you're solving. 
But you know, you can also use the design thinking process um, for portfolios. If you if you use design thinking to tackle your problems in the real world, um, there should be artifacts that were created from that. So, for example, you know, the the defining process is where you're going to be able to sit down and put together an overview, a narrative. Um, document what are the problems I was solving? What were the challenges that I was facing? What were the features that I created? What were the outcomes that came from whatever I do? The empathy version of this, you know, has produced personas or experience maps or data visualization and information graphics. The ideation phase of your process has created maybe whiteboarding exercises or, or group think tanks or sketches um, or, or low fidelity, you know, compositions that you've put together. The build phase is, is what you came up with. It's the final product. It's the final event. It's the final experience. It's the working prototypes. And the analysis stage is, is not only the chance for you to talk about what outcomes, you know, uh, did we achieve? What did I learn? What would I have done differently? But it's also take your portfolio and put it in front of your friends and family and colleagues. Um, watch how they experience it. Just shut up, listen, and look at them and see how they navigate through your portfolio and hear from them what they like, what they don't like. I've grabbed a, a smattering of samples uh, from the internet. This is not Artifacts work. If you're viewing into this and these are your samples, um, shoot me a note. Uh, I might be hiring. Um, I like your approach. Um, these are personas. So this is happening during your, your uh, empathy and research and analysis phase. Uh, uh, phase, you know, personas for those of you that don't know, or are, are essentially you saying like, "Hey, here's who's going to use our product," or "Here's who's going to use our experience." And so again, it's an exercise in editorial design. How are you taking somebody's background um, and and using color, typography, and imagery to put together something compelling that I want to read? You're out there collecting data or statistics, or you're finding interesting numbers um, naturally. Um, I don't want to read a block of text. Can you take that text and can you present that in data visualization or information graphics? During your process, you're taking a moment and saying, oh, you know what? I should take a picture of this. I should take a picture when we're out interviewing people. I should take a picture when we're sitting in a room together, um, um, you know, whiteboarding exercises. I should take a picture of my sketch pads. Um, and we should do it in real time, why, why it's front and center and why we have it in mind. Some of you aren't visual designers, not all of you are going to be creating applications or whatnot, um, but you will have the opportunity to essentially create blueprints um, around what it is that you're about to create. And, and in the application and, and design and technology world, it's oftentimes referred to as a wireframe. Um, and the wireframe doesn't need to be the final version. It's just the blueprint of in the map of what we're about to create. And so this can take on a lot of different fields. But it's important to start to you know um, look at design inspiration out there. I could do these wireframes in PowerPoint if I wanted to, uh, with little to no design knowledge. Essentially, I just need to know what to look for and where to find that inspiration, um, mimic that and then allow it to become my own through my own viewpoint. Um, so, so again, you know, this is going to help articulate the idea. And finally, you know, that last as aspect is building it and making it real. In this case, we have a, you know, a, a mobile app, a mobile application that uh, that someone's created, um, and they've even gone beyond that. Um, they're they're making it so I don't even have to press play. Um, it just naturally. Um, they're using either After Effects or a program called Framer or a program called Principle or a pro program called Envision, and I'll show you those in a minute, um, to animate transitions and to tell the story um, of the features. Something like this is above and beyond. If you're using motion and transitions to articulate your idea, you're really separating yourself from the pack. And it's a great way to just communicate style. All right, so now we're going to jump into uh, some examples and resources um, of people that I feel do a good job at this. Rob, are you able to see me okay? Can you see my full screen? Maybe. Maybe. 
I don't know. Can everybody hear me? Yes, you can hear me. All right, good, thank you. Um, this is a, this is the portfolio of a visual designer, um, Amelia Barlow, who works here at Artifact. And some things that she she's done right. Let me get over here. Um, huh, my screen's kind of broken. This is a bummer. Okay, so we land on Amelia's page. It's simple. Um, I can quickly, first off, I see real quick. Um, I'm a designer and a shameless perfectionist currently working, currently creating things at Artifact. Um, even that is, is a bold and original statement. Um, when I said, what are your strengths? What do you stand for? Who are you? Sometimes it's just one line like this that makes me interested. It's a really clean portfolio. Um, you know, I, I'm curious, I'm interested what it is that we're creating here. I'll jump into one of her case studies. She started with, you know, um, uh, simple, simple content here, um, a, a simple brand um, insignia um, and color to help me experience what this is. It's got me curious. I'm scrolling down the page. She's given it plenty of space to breathe. Um, she's done a project for Pantone, essentially. She's talking briefly about what this looks like. Um, she's creating a lifestyle imagery. It's not just a phone. There's, there's a background in part. Get into the concepts. Um, her contributions. I understand specifically what were her strengths. What did she do? Again, it's a branded experience here. Um, her goals, I'm seeing process happen here, um, her flows and development, what she did in research. She brings us to a prototype, um, which we won't go into right now. And then again, uses plenty of space, color, to articulate what her idea is. Wraps it out into a bigger branded experience. So Amelia is a visual designer, so this feels visual, and I'd expect that from my visual designers. Um, we'll look at Emma real quick as well. Uh, Emma was an industrial designer who switched into UX for us. Um, nice, you know, simple layout. She likely did this in, in something like Squarespace, um, which is um, a, a, a great tool um, for you to get started on your on your portfolio especially the first first go here but emma has a lot more from a ux standpoint she does a ton of research um, around this so there's a lot more content she got the opportunity to work with microsoft and and uh around their hololens project and so bonus points for her doing a project that's just straight up interesting to artifact that's going to get her noticed of course um, and, um, but she very clearly is, is laying it out for us. You know, what was the problem or challenge? She's looking at new ways of telling time in virtual reality that kind of blows my mind. It's super interesting. The project team who was involved, what her specific role was in this. Now, look, we're seeing the artifacts of her process. We're seeing what her field research, um, is bringing. Um, you know, some of their creative collaborations that they're having, some key takeaways and insights that they found while doing this. Then they took that research and they synthesized it. She's designed a graph for us um, that can allow us to dive in. So this, again, is something I'm evaluating you on is um, how do you, how do you, what do your design artifacts look like? This is not the finished finish product. This isn't even going to be a part of the finished product. Um, but the fact that you can organize information and communicate it in a novel way gets me really excited. Her ideation phase, I can see that she didn't just do it for the heck of it because it felt right for her. She took her time with that and made that happen. She happens to be a good sketcher. So this is clearly you know, playing towards her strengths. Um, the direction she went into. Again, she has the strengths of of being able to sketch. You know, these this is awesome for her. 
And so I look at this and it's just, it's clean and it's approachable. I'm, I'm super engaged with it. This is a long case study, but I'm still following along with it. It's kept my interest. Um, and it's created a final output. Now I get to see the object that they created here. I'm seeing features um, called out here. So I can quickly just scroll through this and kind of see what she was thinking and how she did it and where they landed in this. Uh, quick prototypes of it, where again, I don't even have to press play. It's just you know a GIF that's embedded in here. And, uh, and of course, the, the final aspect. So again, this is a great use of space. You know, this is a very long case study. Um, and if you tried to cram this all in up front, you would have lost me in literally um, moments, the first initial moments there. Dave, um, thank you for sure showing a couple of these examples. I'm wondering if we could open it up maybe now to the, the group we have here for a few questions about maybe what you saw um, there. Yeah, good? absolutely. Yeah. Uh, take it away, guys. I can start. I have a question. Oh, go for it. Go ahead, Amber. You sure? Amber, okay. I'll try not to take long. Um, so I understand the nature of a portfolio is that you're conveying your personal brand. So it's very much your role, what you did, your skills. Um, for people who have experience with working in very integrated teams, um, a lot of, you know, the results and the process of the project might be affected by what other teams do or what other team members do in their roles. So how do you convey that as having an impact on the results? Like when you get to the end part of a case study, looking at like that analyze section, the build section, how do you convey that? And um, I guess find the balance between showing what you did versus what was impacted by another team member. I know, it, it, and, it's, and it's hard, especially. So I'll speak on it specifically from a professional standpoint um, um so it's so this isn't necessarily for your well let me ask you so would this be for you to present the idea to your current employer to further something or would this be for you to to house in your own portfolio for for other people outside of your organization to see the latter is the perspective i'm asking from great so um uh in that sense you're going to want to design the narrative around around what you did, and you want to give credit where credit's due. Um, and sometimes you don't have access to what that information is, and that's fine as well. Um, you know, you're essentially um, um, working within the means of of what's available to you. Um, and so it still goes back to you know that editorial layout of, of communicating it. And so there's going to be blanks in it and that's fine. Um, but as long as you're thinking of it as in, on a big level, Hey, what was the problem or challenge? Um, what was my role in that? What were some of the things I don't have control of um, and that I don't have access to? Um, it's all right. Just be transparent and call that out. Um, I don't know if that's, <laughs> you know, answering uh, the question in a high level, I could go deeper with you. Like if there's something specific, sometimes I need like a, um, you know, specific um, challenge that's leaving out or maybe an outcome that, that you're trying to create with it. Um, let me think. This question just popped to my head, so I haven't thought it through too much. Um, but for example, um, I'm usually working on the business side of a project, working with technology uh, developers or UX designers. And so my contribution to the project is very much on the softer side of things, so to speak. You know, I can't speak as much to the technology or like what the actual metrics of uh, what we built for the client was. And so one, it would be more difficult for me to convey that. Um, and then two, that's kind of, I feel like that's usually what's looked at as the meat, like what you're actually delivering from the project, like the technology solution. And yeah. I didn't exactly have a direct hand in that. So for example, you mentioned earlier, you're in product management, right? Or program management, is that the case? Project management for technology. Perfect. Product so products. portfolios yeah. for project managers will make you a 10 percenter. Your competition probably do doesn't have it, which is why you can stick out from that. And, and um, what you're doing is, you're that's why that statement kind of that first statement of hey i'm a project manager what does that even mean like why is that even important why do you need a project manager 
thinking at that level um, before they even jump into a case study so that people are clear like, hey, this is a function. Um, this makes our work better. You know it does. Um, you know why you're there and you know what your strengths are. So that's where it really it's really important for you to call out in a non-designer environment that um, that hey, this is a uh, this is important and this important skill set. Um, then when you jump into the case study, you're celebrating the team. Look, I did not design this. You know, the designers were X, Y, and Z. Um, but I'll tell you what it meant to project manage these designers. I'll tell you what it meant to keep us on time and on budget. Um, and I'll show you what we created along the ways. Again, I'm not the designer. I was the project manager of this. And that's important because of these strengths and, 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 and these types of tasks that I manage. But together, as a whole unit, we created this awesome piece. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Great. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Love that, really, like celebrating the team authentically. Uh, Christine, totally. why don't you uh, ask your question? You mentioned earlier that you could use your portfolio kind of as a visual aid to talk people through in the context of an interview. Can you share some other applications um, to help use your portfolio tell the story? Yeah, you mean applications in regards to um, where else you might use this, like outside of just like getting a job or? Yeah, where it might be appropriate. Like, is it appropriate to use it in an interview? Um, you know, how how do you see that interplay? Or is it something that gets sent off and then just kind of referenced? Yeah, so it's both. Like, um, you're sending it off initially just to get somebody's attention. Like, hey, I'm here, look at me, um, talk to me, respond to me which in itself is a feat of nature sometimes it feels like. Um, and, and usually why we're looking at your portfolio, it's 10 seconds. We're, we're going in 10 seconds and I'm evaluating whole taste like that. Um, I figure if I like your portfolio and I'm calling you back and you're coming in, that's your opportunity to actually tell me the story. Um, and that's where you're, you know, even if, if you're, even if they're not bringing it up, I would recommend saying in it like, hey, do you mind if I pull up my portfolio? Um, again, it's a cheat sheet for you to just kind of be like, maybe you're nervous in, a or in an interview, people get nervous in interviews, uh, the stakes are a bit higher. And so um, your portfolio now becomes your wing person. It's, it's where you can keep track, keep yourself centered, making sure that you're talking about um, what made this project awesome. Not only that, but when you start the job, um, I usually share my portfolio with people. You know, it's like, hey, this is where I've been and this is what I do. Um, and when you meet your coworkers and colleagues, you know, that first three to six months should all be all about building community and building relationships and building trust and doing a ton of coffees and doing a ton, ton of lunch, lunches. So even after you get the job, people are still gonna judge you on your portfolio. Makes sense? That's a really great point and I think the um, sort of idea that the portfolio lives beyond just the immediate getting the job, but sort of as you introduce yourself to the people you work with, and this sort of cheat sheet idea is really similar to how your resume can be used in an interview as well, sort of pulling that out and making sure people really have had a chance to sort of see through some of that. Great points. Um, any questions? Yeah, Sonia. Hey. Um, so my question is kind of like, okay, so it's a, as a busy professional, right? Like you don't have a lot of time to be building out your case studies. And so it might take you like a month or two to like make something really beautiful before you make it go live on your website. So in that like interim, like between when you might be ready to, to post a new case study, or if you only have a project that you think is maybe worthy, like once a year, um, is there something else you can do to like stay relevant in the industry um, besides yeah. just, like posting new case studies? Totally, and um, this goes back to maybe community um, or, or even side projects. Um, and so, for example, um, you know, maybe one of your goals is to attend a lot of networking events for the year, you know? Um, uh, build your community through organizations like Design for America or AIGA or IXDA. Um, or any number of the design um, acronyms that are out there in the world. Um, you know, maybe in your head beforehand, it's, it's saying like, hey, I'm gonna make this a case study. I'm gonna 
um, I'm going to show how I network. Or maybe you go beyond network. Maybe you actually start volunteering. Um, maybe you sit on a board or you're a chair um, or, or a volunteer to a board of directors. Um, that can be a case study. You know, what, what, why did you join? Why was it important? What were some of the tasks um, that, that you helped with? What were some of the outcomes of those tasks? Um, other portfolio pieces could be uh, your, uh, your side project is photography um, or travel. Um, or, or it's a blog. Um, I think a blog is a great way to just get people interested. And by the way, you don't need to be a writer to have a blog. Um, I, I recommend pick three subject matters. One subject matter is you, um, and, and your love for travel and food and cats and whatever the heck it is, you know, um, and the, um, you know, the, the other two subject matters are things that relate to you professionally. So, at design, uh, at artifact, it would be design, technology, and you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Lucas. So, for someone who may not have all of the skills, how do we show that we, you know, in a portfolio that we, you know, have the beginning and the capability of learning quickly and kind of. Um, Maybe not being 100% the best fit for a role, but having that ability to really grow into a role and develop and learn as we, you know, take on a position. Totally, Lucas. What kind of roles do you think you want to do? Um, I'm interested more in like user research, uh, a lot of interacting with um, the people that the designs are ultimately going to be affecting. Yeah, I mean, on the on the short level, you know, we saw Emma's very long case study where we can scroll forever and that can feel a bit intimidating in regards to like, what, like I didn't even gather that much insight, you know? Um, and so the, the abbreviated version of that is still the simple, what was the problem? What was the challenge? What was my role in solving this? And what were some of the outcomes that were created? Even if, even if it was four bullet points, which again, I would still say, try to find a way to get somewhat creative from an editorial design layout standpoint. But even if it's literally four sentences and that's all you have to work with um, and finding kind of a cool image of maybe the brand or, or something that articulates the big vision that you had, like um, it may just be that there may be no scrolling at all. Um, and, and, and maybe it's, it's with, Hey, more, more, more amazing projects to come. Um, um, some prompt like that of like, hey, remember, I'm I, I'm still you know beginning this process. Here here's some smaller work, and as new work comes in, you'll see lo longer, larger, uh, more breadth around the uh, um, around the case studies. Okay, thank you. So yeah, less is still more. You can just have it nice and short and sweet too. Cool. Um, great, thank you. So I was wondering, <clears throat> sorry. With school projects or like projects in DFA, not all of them are always like seen as successful or, you know, not all of them have like a project or like a nice picture at the end. And I was wondering kind of like, how do you market failure or like, how do you market that like you learn through failure um, and like it was productive still? Yeah, it's, um, I think one of the things we look for when we hire people here is self-awareness um, and transparency. It's actually a value of artifacts. And, um, and so I think being able to call it what it is and say like, hey, we had, we had lofty dreams and, and lofty goals and, and no money and no resources and no people and no time you know, to do it. Um, and we learned some things the hard way. Um, you know, it might not be that in the portfolio you're calling out in a headline, we failed. Um, you know, you're probably in the portfolio still giving it some spin of, of how you learned and how you grew individually as, as, a, as a person, or you're giving recommendations. So instead of saying like, look at the shiny thing that we finished with, well, actually we never got to building the shiny thing. Um, but what we did do is we, we found a vision for what, what could solve this or, or, or what some of the limitations are. And so here's here's some of our suggestions of how you go out in the world and what you might take from this and you guys go and build it. Um, so, so yeah, it's, uh, 
And then when you get into the interview, that's where you can say, you know, that's where you can show self-awareness um, and show transparency um, of that. You know what? It actually, it totally fell flat on its face. Um, and here's why it did. And here's what we learned from that. And, uh, and some of it was beyond our control, but, but it was, um, I'm optimistic about it because I learned X, Y, and Z. Great. Well, thank you very much for sharing some of that insight. And I think that's actually a really great lesson for studio leads as well. As you guys are thinking, how do you share the stories of all of your projects across the studio? Um, what are the lessons that you learned that are applicable to other teams, um, to other community relationships that you're building? And how do you really celebrate and showcase the work um, that you all are doing in the community as well? Because I know um, when you're in the grind, sometimes it can feel like um, things are just going wrong, but being able to take a step back and sort of create this celebratory portfolio piece of, of the work that you have done um, can really help you highlight and tell that story of your studio as well. So thank you all um, for joining us um, on the internet. Um, Dave, I was actually wondering if you um, had one last sort of, as you, you heard these last questions, sort of one last wrap up piece um, uh, for given your experience or expertise on, on what you hope people took away from this this call yeah uh, if i was going to end it on a note your portfolio is not your resume and it's not your linkedin uh, your portfolio doesn't need to be all about what made you who you are today your portfolio is an exercise in envisioning who you're going to be what the type of work you want to be doing um, uh, you know, call yourself what you want to become and let the universe present itself. Um, don't be chained down by, by uh, your entire past. This is an envisioning project um, for the future you. So thank you, Rob. Thank you, all of you that have tuned in and attended and, uh, and for all the hard work everyone does for Design for America. Thank you. And um, as mentioned before, this is the first in a series that we'll be doing with Artifacts. So we're really, really excited. The next one's coming up in April. Uh, so we'll be sure to send out those dates um, to you all soon. Be on the lookout. Um, and it's just going to be a great chance to learn from some of the fantastic designers at Artifact here. So with that, um, be on the lookout for the tips and tools that Dave sent. And looking forward to seeing you next time.